it is said that old wine is sweet so like old wine harmony of praise is truly sweet and they are said that old moon shines brighter and like old moon harmony of praise is shining brighter and in Jamaica they will tell you that the old broom knows the corner the new broom sweeps cleaner but the old broom knows the corner truly they know the corner they have done well I was truly blessed today I'm not sure if it's because sweetness is shouting so, so loud today why they are sounding so sweet today but today harmony of praise truly blessed our hearts I have not heard them for a while but they have done tremendously well and I must commend the leader or leaders who are in charge and those who make the sacrifice to continue to give off their best for the master and that is what I will be talking about today. Giving of our best to the master. And that is what we have been called to do. Our Bible class this evening will be at 3.30. We're having an early start. One or earlier. And at 4.30, the Family Life Department will have a special presentation. All are invited not only to the Family Life special presentation this afternoon but also for the bible class at 3 30 and then the evacuation committee will meet immediately after the presentation this evening i direct your attention to the 29th division of the first book of the chronicles chronicles first chronicles chapter 29 and reading verses 5 through to verse 6 that was read by Dr. Goddard earlier is where I will pitch my tent today with some nuggets to share with God's people the word of the Lord says the gold for things of gold and the silver for things of silver and for all kinds of work to be done by the hands of craftsmen who then is willing to consecrate himself this day to the Lord then the leaders of the father's houses leaders of the tribes of Israel the captains of thousands and of hundreds with the officers over the king's work offered willingly they gave for the work of the house of the Lord 5,000 talents and 10,000 dorics of gold 10,000 talents of silver 18,000 talents of bronze and 100 thousand talents of iron and whoever had precious stones as I read this passage of scripture this week and preparing for this message I remember talking with sister Julian some weeks ago and she told me of a loving aunt that she had who, who died and of course she loved to buy precious jewels Jewels before she became a Seventh day Adventist. And she stored many, a lot of jewels. And when she became a Seventh day Adventist, she sold all the gold that she had acquired. And she brought it to the house of the Lord. And I went through this text and, and, and I read this. I remember her. I didn't meet her personally, but I just. I was just blessed in vision 
with the joy that she felt in coming to the Lord and knowing that the gold that she had acquired over the many years and silver that she could sell it and take it to the treasury of the Lord for mission. I found it in this text in verse 8 and whoever had precious stones gave them to the treasury of the house of the Lord into the hand of Jehel the Gershonite then the people rejoiced for giving to the Lord they rejoiced for they had offered willingly because with a loyal heart they had offered willingly to the Lord and King David also rejoiced greatly he was happy of, at the response of the people he rejoiced greatly and so I have entitled the message self consecration for service self consecration for service let us pray our heavenly father we need to hear from you and so lord i pray that you will move this lump of clay from the minds and hearts of your people and i pray heavenly father that jesus will come down now and stand in this pulpit and through the medium of your Holy Spirit, speak now to the hearts of your people. And may your people glorify your name today upon receiving your words. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. With these words, the words I just read in your hearing, David appealed to the leaders of the people of Israel and to the congregation to make special sacrifices for the building of the house of God. David had been denied the building of the house of the Lord himself because he was not worthy to do so. It was David who sitting in his palace thought about the house of the Lord and the, the, the scripture tells us that David said to himself I am living in a palace with cedar but there is no permanent building for the house of the Lord and he conceived this idea that a building should be erected for the service of God and so he had planned to give him to give birth to this building and the Bible says that when he made it known to the prophet Nathan that his intention was to erect a building for the for the how for the worship of God the Lord appeared unto David and said no you will not build this building in my name. But he gathered the material to build the house of the Lord. In 1 Chronicles chapter 22 and verse 7 through to verse 9, David reported the reason for the prohibition, the reason for not being allowed to build the building of the Lord. David said, I have shed much blood. A matter of fact, according to David's own word, he said, To Solomon, my son, as for me, it was in my mind to build a house to the name of the Lord God. But the word of the Lord came to me saying, You have shed much blood and have made great wars. You shall not build a house for my name, 
because you have shed much blood on the earth in my sight. Behold, a son shall be born to you who shall be a man of rest and I will give him rest from all his enemies all around. His name shall be Solomon for I will give him peace and quietness to Israel in his days. So David conceived the idea and David said in his own words that God came to him and said, No, you will not build a house in my name because you have shed much blood and you have done great wars. And so because God had decided not to allow David to build his house for worship, for service. David called the people together. He decided to do something anyhow. And so David called the people together on this occasion. And David, the Bible says, called the leaders and the people of Israel. And he said, consecrate your service to the Lord. Starting with the elders, consecrate your service to the Lord. And, they, and then David looked at the people and he said, consecrate yourselves unto the Lord. And so every man must consecrate himself to the Lord, David said. It will not be a group thing, it will be an individual thing. Consecration is the ritual act or ceremony by which a person or place is set aside for the worship and service of God. And so what David was here saying. Is that every man should set himself aside. For the service of God. Just as this building is consecrated and set aside for the service of the Lord. David is here saying that every man in Israel starting with the leaders. And then all the congregation that they should set themselves aside in holiness. For the service of God. At this point David had willingly consecrated himself. And his service to God. And so he was leading by example. And now he's calling upon the people to do likewise. David identified the project of building the temple with the service of God. I repeat that. David identified. The project of building the temple with the service of God. What is he saying? By their faithfulness in this matter, the people would reveal the extent of their faithfulness to God. What David is here saying is that if they are faithful to bring the material, to bring the house of the Lord, if they are faithful to give up their means, if they are faithful to work, then in their own lives, they will be faithful to God. If the man is unfaithful in responding to the call, then chances are David is saying that he will be irresponsible in his Christian experience. So the service that you give the church Reflects on the service that you give to God. Acceptable service to God 
is willing. It is not a burden. It is cheerful. And it is immediate. David called the people to a response. He said, consecrate yourselves to the Lord. He did not say tomorrow. He did not say next week or next month or next year. He said, consecrate yourself to the Lord right now. I am calling the leaders and the congregation of Israel to set themselves apart. Set themselves aside for consecrated service to the Lord. I share with you three points in David's appeal that I believe is relevant for you and me today of calling the people to set themselves aside to consecrate themselves unto the Lord. The first point is simple this when David called them to consecration. God claims the loving surrender of our life to his service. God, he claims the loving surrender of our life to his service. We should lovingly surrender our lives to his service. We should cheerfully surrender our life to his service. We should willingly consecrate our lives to the service of God. Why should we do this? You see, because Jesus has the right to our life. Because the Bible tells us that he created us. He is our maker. According to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he them. Male and female. The Bible tells us that God came down and formed man from the dust of the earth and breathed into man's nostril the breath of life and man became a living soul we are to surrender lovingly to God because God created us he's our maker he's our king the bible says acts now concerning the days that are past which were before you since the day that God created man on this earth David in the book of Psalms tells us that God stepped out on nothing and called this world into being. God created man. And we are accountable to God. God created man on the earth and acts from one end of heaven to the other. Whether any great thing like this has ever happened or anything like it has ever been heard. Doctors may try. Philosophers may talk. But nothing like that has ever been done on the earth. The creation of man, only God. And God alone. Who is creator and redeemer of mankind. The Bible tells us that nothing has been done like that, like this before or heard. Jesus says, who created you, O Jacob, and who formed you, O Israel? Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. So God created us. He owns us. And David is appealing to the people to say, God has special claim upon your life. And we ought to consecrate ourselves to God for service because he owns us. We are not our own. He says, you are mine. I belong to God. And you belong to him. What does it mean? When God says you are mine, I want you to understand that you are created by God for God. 
I repeat that. That you are created by God. For God. And no one else. The Lord has a purpose for creating you. He has a purpose for creating me. And he's also expecting you to live by that purpose. So when you walk, you must know that you're of royal priesthood. You're a holy nation. You have been called by God. You're a special people. Uh, some expression to say that somebody's taking liberty of you. Let no one do that. Because you belong to God. You're royalty. You're created. For a special purpose. And God is expecting you and me to live by that purpose. I want you to understand that what God means when he says you are mine. He means that your marriage belongs to God. Your finances belong to God. Your health belongs to God. Your husband, your wife, your children. Everything you have and own and possess belong to God. And we must realize that. The word of God says in Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thought of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. He's interested in our welfare. Everything about us, God has a special interest. Thank you, Lord. For being interested in someone like me. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. From where you have brought me from. To where I am now. Thank you Lord. I've seen so many young men. That I grew up with. They have fallen. They are buried. And I'm still here. Thank you Lord. For the special interest. That you have in me. If he walks out on you. Thank you Lord. For the special interest that you have. In me. If she walks out on you. Thank you Lord. For the special interest. That you have. In me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The second point of David's appeal in this text. God claims you and me because he is our redeemer. So he created us. Look at it. But man got messed up. Adam and Eve sinned against God. The wages of sin is death. Mankind deserved the punishment of death. But thanks be to God, the scripture tells us that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, the gift is Jesus Christ for God. So loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life because God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. The gift is Jesus. Jesus came back to redeem us. That is pure love. Jesus only. And Jesus alone. And so we belong to him. He has the claim upon my life. Because of his redeeming power. His redeeming blood. When I was still sinning. According to the apostle Paul. Christ died. Scarcely, the scripture says, would one die for a righteous man. But while we were no good, we were messed up. Christ died to redeem us. 
he says I the Lord am your savior and your redeemer the mighty one of Jacob in Isaiah chapter 49 and verse 26 Luke says that he has redeemed our soul from destruction in Luke chapter 1 and verse 68 and Paul says do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost who is in you whom you have of God and you are not your own for you were bought with a price therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit and in your mind which arts God because Christ came down and died the Bible says we are bought with a price the precious blood of Jesus we have been redeemed because Christ spilled his blood on Calvary's cross to save us. So David said, consecrate yourself because you belong to God. He created you. Consecrate yourself to God because you belong to God when you got messed up. He came down and he redeemed you. Praise God for your redemptive love. There are two reasons why we are not our own. Paul says so in the text. The first reason, the spirit which has possession of our bodies is not our own. It is found in the text. And two, we have been bought with a price therefore we are to glorify God in our bodies because our bodies belong to Christ the Bible tells us that the spirit of God dwells in our body we don't own the spirit the spirit dwells in us and the spirit is the spirit of God and so we need to do something to our body so that the spirit will not only dwell in our bodies but the spirit will remain in our bodies. And then we are cognizant of the fact that we are bought with a price. The precious blood of Jesus that harmony of praise sung about earlier today. That precious blood will never, never, never lose its power. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And the last point I will make in David's appeal of consecration to the service of God is that God gives us the nature of our self-consecration. God gives us the nature. Of how we ought to consecrate ourselves to him. How we ought to set aside ourselves. For the service of God. Listen. To what he says. How we ought. Paul says. I am appealing to you therefore. Brethren. By the mercies of God. You know where I'm going. To present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God Paul says which is your reasonable service but I give you the living bible translation in ending that text and it sounds beautiful elder Blake listen to it when you preach you use many translations it says, I am appealing to you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. It sounds good when I saw it. And I said, Wow! It says, which is your reasonable service? 
But this translator went a little further. He said, which is your spiritual worship? Which is to say that we are worshiping God in our bodies. Whatever we do with it. We are witnessing to the world of our worship for God. And so evening you are eating. If we put junk in it. I'm telling you. And if we bore it up and put jewels all over it. We are saying to the world what kind of worship we give to God. Which is our spiritual worship. Spiritual worship. Which is our spiritual. Before we give ourselves away in mercy to men. We need to give ourselves first in worship to God. A matter of fact, one of Elder Down's favorite texts is seek ye first the kingdom of God. He repeats it over and over and over again since I have been here. He's reciting it over and over again. There's not a conversation that he doesn't bring up seek ye first the kingdom of God. That is what we are called to do. Our bodies must be first to God. Not any and anybody should touch it. And that is why purity is important. Yes. Even among our young ladies and young men. Should not be defiled. I'm preaching God's word today brethren. Paul says. It is presenting. Of a sacrifice to God. So for you to understand truly what Paul is here saying in the text. I must exegete the text. By going back to the Old Testament. And the sacrificial service. You see. This is the language of worship from the Old Testament. In coming to God the worshiper. Brought a sheep. Or a bull. Or a pigeon. For a sacrifice on the altar. Are you hearing me? As an offering to God. So the animal is killed. Whether it is a sheep or a bull or a pigeon. There were different kinds of sacrifices but at the heart of it. Was that sin demanded punishment. And the slain animal represented God's willingness to accept a substitute for the worshiper might live. So without the shedding of blood, without punishment, there can be no remission of sin. But all the Old Testament believers knew that. The blood of bulls and goats and pigeons could not take away their sins. Paul says so in Hebrew chapter 10 and verse 4. He pointed out that the blood of bulls and goats and pigeons could not. Only Jesus could. Jesus. Only Jesus could. They pointed beyond themselves to Jesus who was the final sacrifice for our sins. So when Paul says that our worship is to present our bodies as living sacrifice, he does not mean that we die and atone for our sins. Well, what does it mean? Let us take four words in the verse. Bodies, living, holy, and acceptable to God. We are going to take the four words to show you what Paul means when he says that we ought to present our bodies as living sacrifices, holy, acceptable to God. He's not talking about the Old Testament sacrificial service where the bull or the sheep or the goat or the pigeon had to die for punishment. No, not that sacrifice. He's talking about the spiritual sacrifice. 
He's talking about the bodies. Present your bodies as living sacrifice, holy, and accept of the God which is your spiritual worship. The point here is not to present to God your bodies and not your mind and your heart or your spirit. Because God clearly say in verse 2, be transformed in the renewal of your mind. The point is to stress that our body counts. We belong to God's soul and body. We are not, we don't belong to ourselves. The sacrifice of our body to God is not a sacrifice for sin. That was done already in the sacrifice of Christ. That is why our bodies are acceptable to God. We need to consecrate our bodies to God's service. That is what Paul is here saying. That we need to consecrate our bodies. He's talking about our mind. He's talking about our heart. He's talking about our soul. Need to be consecrated to God. When the mind is consecrated to God, we will think holy things. We will not put garbage in our heads. When the body is consecrated to God, we will not put junk in our bodies. Oh, that's why we don't smoke and, and drink and party all night. Oh, that's why we don't bore up ourselves all over. We consecrate our bodies for spiritual worship to God. The mind, let this mind be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus. The Bible tells us that we need to have a renewal of our minds. We need to think holy things. And we need to make holy thought. The Bible talks about holy conversations. We need to say nice things and good things about our brothers and sisters. We can criticize them and beat them down it comes from our body are you hearing me oh the bible tells us that we must consecrate it as our spiritual service to God our bodies he says as a living sacrifice a life that is visible that is what he's talking about when we die to self and sin and Jesus is living in us then the life that we live is a visible life Visible, lived out physical actions of love. We have always been martyrs. But that is not what Paul had in mind here. Here he has in mind a lifestyle. Present, pre present your bodies a living sacrifice. It is your living that is the act of worship. How we live we should let every act of our body in living be an act of worship that is let every act of our living body be a demonstration that God is our treasure let every act of our living body show that Christ is more precious to us than anything else let every act of our living body be dead to all that dishonors God that is how we ought to live. Every act shows to the world, visible, that we are serving God. That is our spiritual service to God. You see, if we start living like this and acting like this, we will hear less criticism about God's people. Less criticism about God's people. Paul goes on to say in the text, holy, acceptable to God, 
Probably the best explanation of holy bodies comes from Romans chapter 6 and verse 13 where Paul said almost the very same thing he says here using the the, using the very language of presenting our bodies to God only he refers to our body or our bodily members and not just our bodies listen to what Paul says in Romans chapter 6 and verse 30 do not present your members to sin huh? he's talking about our bodies as instruments for unrighteousness or don't use your bodies, your body, my body, to practice unrighteousness. It is what Paul is saying when he's talking about holy, acceptable to, Lord, to, to God. Don't use this body that belongs to God, that God created, that God redeems. Don't use it to practice unrighteousness. Paul says, don't use it to practice. Present a living, holy body to God. Means give your members, your eyes, your tongue, your hands, and your feet. Give your body to God doing righteousness. So even using your eyes, you can have holy look. Or you can have sinful look. Even using your eyes, you can look at sinful things that we should not be looking at. Listen. Paul says that we should not give our, the members of our body over to unrighteousness. So we can look some places that we shouldn't be looking. We can say some things that we shouldn't be saying using the tongue that James says so difficult for us to bridle. We can use our hands to do some things that we shouldn't be doing. It is unholy, unrighteous. And we can use our feet to go places that we shouldn't be going. Whether you are creeping in somebody's house at night. Or you are going to some disco club. There are some places that we shouldn't be going. And here Paul is saying, don't use the members of your body. To practice. And righteousness. But we must give our bodies as a living sacrifice holy acceptable to God or holy spiritual worship everything that we do or say must show to the world that Jesus Christ is living in us so Paul says for me to live is Christ and to die is gain I have been crucified with Christ Nevertheless, I live yet not I, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live according to the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Oh, that is what make our body holy when we practice holy things. And God says we ought to give ourselves as living sacrifice. In concluding this message, it says that is acceptable to God. It means that we can give worship to God, spiritual worship, that is acceptable to God. Or we can do worship that we believe is acceptable to God. But it is not acceptable to God. God has a measuring rod. And he gives us the blueprint to follow. And if we don't follow the blueprint, we may come to worship and we may jump high in the sky. 
we may shout loud louder than the thunder of Mount Horeb but if we don't practice these things then our worship our spiritual worship will not be acceptable to God David's appeal to the leaders and the people of Israel the congregation the Bible says when David appealed to the people the people accepted the appeal of David listen the Bible tells us in verse 7 they gave for the work of the house of God 5,000 talents and 10,000 doric of gold 10,000 talents of silver 18,000 talents of bronze and 100,000 talents of iron and whoever had precious stones gave them to the treasury of the house of the Lord into the hand of Jael and the Gershonite then the people rejoiced for they had offered willingly because with a loyal heart they had offered willingly to the Lord and David also rejoiced they offered willingly to the Lord because the people offered willingly from the heart it was a joyful cons consecration by the entire congregation the Lord says it is more blessed to give to the Lord than to receive evil from the Lord I call the people of God today as David called the nation of Israel, consecrate yourself unto the Lord for spiritual service. God bless you. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily. Worldly pleasures all forsaken. Take me, Jesus. Take me now. I surrender. I yet surrendered to Jesus you have been contemplating surrendering your life to Jesus to, to give Jesus your spiritual worship but somehow you have been tied down by the evil one and you want to say pastor pray for me today I truly want to surrender to Jesus I truly want to give my body to him as a living sacrifice wholly acceptable to the Lord which would be my spiritual worship I'm willing I'm ready
pray with you if you will only walk from where you're standing and walk to the altar before we close not yet surrender to Jesus not a baptized member and you're here in our midst you have sat you have listened to God's word do you want to put up your hand do you want to raise your hand do you want to say pray for me pastor I want to pray for you is there one person in our midst to God be the glory my sister I'm inviting you to join me at the altar is there another Is there another? Blessed my sister. God bless you. Is there another? Is there another? Is there another before we sing the third stanza? Because the appeal is not yet over. Is there one more in our midst? Not yet surrender to Jesus. But you want to say today, Lord, I want to surrender my life as a spiritual worship to God. He has done so much for me. He has protected me. He has guided me. He has provided for me and my family. And I want to say thank you, Lord, by surrendering to Jesus. Is there one more? Is there one more in our midst? Is there one more? Not yet a baptized member. But you want to say, Lord, I'm surrendering to you today. As we sing the third stanza, all to Jesus I surrender. I'm still calling for someone who has not yet surrendered to Jesus to walk forward. All to Jesus I surrender. Make me Savior. Thy Holy Let me feel the Holy Spirit truly. truly know that thou art mine. Oh, yes, I surrender. I surrender all. I surrender all. Blessed Savior, all to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender. We, we pause again, and I'm inviting Sister Nadia to put the third stanza back on the screen for me because my next appeal goes out to God's people. You have not been. Live in the way God expected you to live. But today you want to say, Lord, I surrender all to you. Make me Savior once again, holy thy. Let me feel thy Holy Spirit truly know that thou art mine. You want to walk from where you're standing and walk to the altar and say, Pastor, pray for me. Because today I'm taking a stand against the evil one. I want to recommit my life to you in consecration. I want to set myself apart to be used by you God. And today is the day, the starting point. I'm consecrating myself afresh and new to you God. Is there one person? You want to walk from where you're standing and walk to the altar. I am praying that you will come. Is there one person? You want to walk from where you're standing and you want to say, Lord, I want to recommit and rededicate myself to you in service. I want my body to be a spiritual worship. Is there one person? 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 To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. You want to walk to the altar and say, Lord, I'm recommitting myself to you in service. I've failed you so many times. Even the preacher standing here with the mic in his hand. 
I fail God. But today I'm taking another stand as David appealed to the people of God to reconsecrate themselves anew. And the Bible tells us that the people joyfully consecrated themselves to the Lord and said, Lord, you said, the Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Is there another? Is there another? Is there another? Oh, the Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Oh, they are re dedicating themselves to the Lord. Reconsecration today. We are taking a stand for God. We are saying, Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit today. And use us from henceforth mightily. That everything that we do or say wherever we go. Will truly reflect that Christ is living in us. Like the apostle Paul, I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet not I. But Christ who lives in me and the life which I now live in the flesh I live. Oh, I'm calling the church for reconsecration. To the service of the Lord from henceforth you pledge in your heart that God make me better. Uh, I'm allowing you to take control of my life. So that the Spirit of God can truly use me as an act of worship. Wherever, wherever I, I go. And whomever I will come in contact with. They will truly know that I've been with Jesus. The fourth stanza as we sing this beautiful hymn. We are recommitting our lives to the Lord for service. Oh Lord, I, I surrender. surrender. Now I feel now the sacred flame. Oh, the joy of full salvation. Oh, the joy of full salvation. Yes, glory, glory to His name. Glory, glory to I can feel my helper in the place. I can feel the Holy Spirit. Oh Lord, now I feel the sacred flame. Oh Lord. I surrender. I surrender all. All to thee. All to thee, my blessed Savior. Shall we pray? Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, I want to present myself first to you. Lord, you know that I have messed up, I have sinned. Well, thanks be to you, O God. You have brought me thus far by faith, and you have given me another chance to make my wrongs right and my crooked paths straight. So I'm sinful, Lord, but thou art holy. And so, Lord, like David asked the people to consecrate themselves to you, and he started with the leaders first. I come consecrating myself to you, Lord. Oh, Lord, wash me and, and cleanse me, Lord. Remove everything that is unlike thee from me. Set me free, Lord. So as I lead your people, they can truly say, that the spirit of the Lord dwells within me. Oh Lord, I want to present to you the elders of this church, the church board members and all the officers of the church. Oh Lord, I pray that you will consecrate them anew. But they must come because you will not force anyone against their will. So I pray that today they will truly open their hearts. And allow the spirit of the Lord to come within and transform them into your likeness and into your similitude. Oh Lord, I thank you. I thank you so much for my dear sister who walked alone to the altar. She heard your words and she said that she's surrendering her life to you. Oh Lord, she wants her body to be an act of worship. And I pray, oh Lord, that you will fill her today with your Holy Spirit and lead her, Lord. Help her to depend on you. And I know, Lord, that you want her and you 
claim her because you created her and you redeem her so Lord I pray ultimately that you will save her in your eternal kingdom and for those who have walked to the altar Lord you know every face and you know every heart and you know what they have been through you know their struggles their ups and downs but Lord you have brought them here today to hear this message and they have come again to consecrate themselves to you oh Lord bless them as they now set themselves aside once again to continue to live for you and I pray oh Lord that every act that they will perform will be act of worship that will draw men and women boys and girls to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ thank you Lord for the word thank you for the blessings today Forgive us of our sins, we pray thee. And when you shall burst the cloud to come back to earth, to claim your people from this sinker's earth, I pray, oh Lord, that none of us standing here today will be missing from that number. But we will all hail you as Lord of lords and King of kings. We will go home to spend eternity with you. And we will ever be in your presence throughout it. Is our prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Both now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Have a blessed day everyone as we prepare for the recession.